I worked with Bob uh, when he was FBI director and I was U.S. attorney, and he's a credible guy. Again, not a perfect guy, and he's going to make mistakes. But to say that, like, now the guy's in the tank for somebody or another, I just don't buy that. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who was also part of the president's transition team, don't forget, before being let go, talking with Nicole Wallace in this very studio earlier today about special counsel Robert Mueller, who, according to The Washington Post, is set to meet with President Trump's lawyers sometime this week. Donald Trump has said he's not going to fire Mueller. But there's a smear campaign underway against Mueller. It's happening largely on the right and friendly media. An article posted on Politico today looks at the strategy behind this and says, quote, the purpose of the onslaught, according to people close to the White House, isn't to encourage the president to oust the special counsel. Rather, these people said the goal is to sow public doubt about Mueller and his prosecutors in advance of upcoming criminal trials and to give the president political cover if he wants to start issuing pardons. A new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll gives an indication of how members of the public view the special counsel these days. 28 percent held positive views of Robert Mueller in December, up from 24 percent in June, while 21 percent held negative views in December, up from 11 percent in June. Here with us to talk about all of it, Julia Ainsley, NBC News national security and justice reporter, and Jennifer Rogers, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, these days executive director of Columbia Law's Center for the Advancement of Public Integrity. Welcome to you both. And uh, Julia, I know you mentioned one of our producers. This is not the first meeting between Team Mueller and Team Trump. It's just that this one and the timing may be the most interesting to date. That's right. And it isn't unusual for defense and the prosecution to meet during a trial like this. This just seems to have higher stakes because of what the president wants out of this meeting. He, of course, wants to be exonerated. He wants to remove himself, all the while not really caring if the train goes forward on, on other people who may have worked with him. He just wants to be removed. And I think that the lawyers are promising him this, of course, to keep him calm, to keep him from issuing other tweets or doing anything else that could really be damaging to himself, both his presidency and his case. So, Counselor, I know you can't speak to this meeting, but how do these go? What kind of language is used? How formal or informal? And one question I do have for you, what's the, what's the chance that Team Mueller is going to say, by the way, we want to talk to your guy. We want to talk to your client before this is all over. Well, this is one of those meetings where there's lots of words, but not a lot of content. I mean, they're... So unusual for Washington. Yes, well, maybe. But uh, so, you know, they'll just kind of say, here's what we need from you. There might be kind of a checklist of things that they still need from the White House that they'll ask for. The White House will say, you know, when will you wrap up? And they will say, oh, we don't know. They'll be noncommittal. So there's not going to be a whole lot of information going back and forth, I suspect. Will they issue a request to get testimony from the president? I don't know. That's a very interesting question. I mean, I think that they will need that in order to wrap up. Certainly, they'll need that to wrap up even the obstruction investigation, which I think is going to be the first piece that they'll be finished with since it's such a discreet subject matter. So uh, maybe they will issue that request. That'll be very interesting to see. And Julia, the fear here is that the advice the president's been getting from counsel, counsel who may not want the whole reaction to bad advice, to bad news, um, is not going to be what the president wants to hear. Right. I mean, we know that this was a job that few people in Washington wanted. There yeah. were a number of people that were interviewed to be Trump's lawyer um, who turned down this mm -hmm. job. Um, so, And it's a tough one to be in. You have a client who will mouth off and will kind of go in a different direction that's apart from strategy. Um, but in this case, he may not get the news he wants to hear. And um, they may just keep delaying that deadline. You know, they told him, just wait till Thanksgiving, wait till Christmas. Now they're saying wait till the new year. And, and maybe that's a strategy. Strategy for a little while, just sort of keep dangling the end uh, a little further down the timeline. Is there any of this, Jennifer, compulsory? There's that process in trials called discovery, where both sides have a uh, process back and forth about evidence and witnesses. Is, is this courtesy or is this written down somewhere? So this is courtesy. Until a case actually starts, then there are no real procedural requirements. There are some policies that the Justice Department follows with uh, grand jury investigations. So if you ask whether you are the target of a, a grand jury investigation, the prosecutors have to tell you that. But in terms of turning over information, there are no requirements until a case is actually filed. So this is just courtesy, um, which, of course, they still need things from the White House. And, uh, you know, for, for, I guess, political with a small p reasons, uh, they want to have this meeting or they're 
are willing to have this meeting, but it's not compulsory at all. Julia, you have a byline for us, and you sit down to write and file stories every day, and you have to start out with a blank computer page. What is the story you want to write? What's the, what's the unknown you're chasing as 2017 gets ready to give way to 2018? I think where we really start to kind of untangle this web and see where everything fits together is what meetings the president himself knew about. Did he know about that June 2016 meeting that his son had with the Russian lawyer? Did he know about Flynn's calls to the Russian ambassador to talk about sanctions? And did he even direct some of these calls? Right now, we've gotten a lot of details from the indictments and the uh, plea agreements that Special Counsel Mueller has put out. But there's a name missing from all of this, and that's Donald Trump. And so we need to see where he fits into that. And then we need to see, of course, in the obstruction case, uh, what he may have been trying to hide from this prosecution in the meantime. Counselor, you want to take a whack at the same question? Well, I agree. I mean, to me, the obstruction piece is uh, a little bit more interesting because I think it's much closer to being a real case. So I want to know what he said in those meetings with his advisors and his aides. So thinking about, should we fire Comey? You know, how are we going to do it? Why are we doing it? Right. I mean, that's the big discussion that they clearly were having that we don't know anything about yet and that the Mueller team is now finding out as they uh, interview these people in the White House. So that's really what I want to know, be a fly on the wall in those meetings.